Thank you. Before I start, I'd like to show a quick video of our little story of Plant for the Planet. And I'll, I'll be, by, be, be right back. Thank you that you give us children the chance to share our thoughts with you. It's not common, but we think, children think it should be common. I was in fourth grade, nine years old, and in our class we had the unit about the climate crisis. Um, and during this unit I learned a lot about Van Gary Matai, the um, Peace Nobel Prize laureate um, from Kenya, and she planted 30 million trees in 30 years with many, many other women there. And in this um, unit, I developed the idea that we could plant one million trees in each country of the world. We have already done more than 150 plants for the Planet Academy in over 20 countries. At the academies, there's always a child giving a presentation about climate justice. Climate justice means that every citizen in the world is allowed to pollute the air with a certain amount of CO2. In average, each European exhausts five times this amount. An African, on the other hand, uses about a quarter of the allowed amount. At the academies, we children show other children that even a single tree can bind 10 kilos of CO2 per year and how they can plant themselves to send a signal against the climate crisis. They also learn how to give presentations in front of other children to spread the idea of plan for the planet. Everybody that is going to start one million trees in their country, come up on the stage. Felix Finkbeiner. Dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving us children the chance um, to speak here and thank you for making this year the International Year of Forest. We children are the majority of, on, this, on this world. We can make a difference. And never forget, one mosquito cannot do anything against the rhino, but a thousand mosquitoes can make a rhino change its direction. By receiving the Billion Tree Campaign, we children are receiving um, the worldwide, the global official tree counter, which means that all the governments, all the companies, all the people that plant trees report to us children how much they have done. Wow! Klasse, Ihre Namen schreibe ich mir da gleich auf. 
Well, Felix, you had this powerful slogan a couple of years ago, stop talking, start planting. But now I'm asking you to start talking. <laughs> Thank you. The Ernst, the Excellency Mr. Abdullah, it's a great honor for me to be here and to talk to you here today because many among you are of some of the most important fighters for our future. Some of you here have been fighting for, for decades against the climate crisis. And it's only because of you that we have come this far in um, s surviving on renewable energy and in fighting against the climate crisis. Thank you. And it's only because of you that sustainability is now such a powerful idea and that our generation has a perspective and um, for our future. So as a member of the generation that will profit most of all these actions, I want to say thank you. And um, I think we all agree that the climate crisis is one of the biggest challenges we are facing, maybe even the defining challenge of our time. Yet at the same time, the climate crisis has far too little of a presence in our political debates. So why are we not talking more about this issue? It's because our political systems reward short-term successes and, and short-term projects instead of tackling these long-term issues. And because of that, during the last um, national elections here in Germany, climate change, global warming played a very small role. Actually, during the Chancellor debate um, between Merkel and Steinbrück back then, the word climate wasn't even used. So now we're heading to our next election in September 2017 here in Germany. And we have to do our best to define, to set the agenda for this election. And I think that there are four main points that we should be talking about and that we need to achieve. I think the first one is getting youth out to vote. In the two big catastrophes of the last year, I mean the Brexit referendum and the American elections, if only youth had had the right to vote, these outcomes would not have happened. And I think that these two events also convinced many youth around the world, but also here in Germany, that they have to get out and vote this year. I think the second big topic, the second big aim um, is that in every sentence we utter, we have to emphasize the importance of Europe as a project and as a vision. The third main um, goal should be ending our reliance on coal here in Germany. And um, the fourth big aim is that we have to talk about climate refugees. Everyone needs to understand what climate refugees are. As many of us and many of you here will know, when the Arabic Spring came to Syria in 2011, it arrived in a country that is, was just suffering through its biggest drought in 900 years. And because of that drought, three million farmers in Syria had just lost their, lost their livelihoods, and many of them had migrated to the cities. And that kind of environment allowed such a terrible civil war to start. So to some extent, all these refugees from the Syrian civil war are also climate refugees. And this country and everyone has to understand that if we do not tackle, if we do not solve the climate crisis, we will be facing hundreds of millions of climate refugees um, in the next decades. So I think that these are four of the most important topics we should be talking about in this upcoming election. But at the same time, we also need to be talking about solutions. Because talking about problems will not motivate anyone. Only talking about solutions will motivate people. And in doing so, I think what we have to do um, is we have to understand that there's not the one single solution that is going to solve the climate crisis, but there are many wonderful approaches that we have to support. And even more importantly, is if someone proposes something we have to do the be our best to support each other instead of criticizing 
um, the approaches of other people. So we have to be, do our best not to repeat the criticisms of our enemies um, and criticize each other's projects, but to support each other. And there's many wonderful visions. There's the vision of Elon Musk, who's building batteries, not just batteries that you can put in your basement, but also batteries you can put on wheels, his electric cars. And a hundred um, factories, like his Gigafactory, would produce enough storage space to store the entire energy that we need. Now, some are saying that if we put the same energy mix into, into those batteries, we're not actually improving anything. But I think what we have to say is we will never be able to store solar energy in traditional motors. So this is one of these wonderful visions that we have to talk about. But there are many more. There's um, the idea of using solar thermal energy from, our worlds, from the deserts of the world um, to power our economies. The idea of Desert Tech came up about, about a decade ago, but instead of championing it, um, many criticized it with arguments like, we've been plundering Africa for 500 years, now we're stealing the sun too. But we have, to, we have to champion these ideas, and I think that the Desert Tech vision is also part of the solution. Because in the next years, until 2022, in Germany, we will um, power down all our nuclear power plants. And people are suggesting that instead we should use coal or, or build gas pipelines to power Germany. But instead, what we have to build is solar pipelines. Because these former um, nuclear energy um, power stations have all the distribution grid we need um, to effectively transport solar energy. So all we have to do is build a solar pipeline, for instance, from Morocco to Neckar-Westheim. And from there, we already have the distribution network to, um, to distribute this energy. So there are many wonderful visions. And we have to champion past successes. For instance, the EEG-Umlage, the renewable energy law in Germany. So what happened is this law encouraged people to invest in solar energy for the past two decades. And because of it, the price of solar power plummeted um, by 95%. The price of one um, watt peak of solar power plummeted from 7 euros to now 33 cents. And because of this wonderful investment, it's now incredibly cheap to build solar panels all around the world. Next year, for the first time, we will be producing solar power for the same price as producing um, nuclear energy or traditional energy from fossil fuels. And the Chinese government is now ending its construction of 100 new um, coal power plants and instead, in 2016, built 35 gigawatts of renewable energy stations. So we are really seeing a momentum thanks to this wonderful investment. Then there's the wonderful um, divestment movement that has had a tremendous success around the world. And we children and youth that plan for the planet have another vision. And our vision is to plant a trillion trees. How did that come about? You just saw in the video, it was just a million in each country of the world. So how did we get to the trillion? Well, after a few years of planting these million trees and after achieving the first million trees in a couple of countries, we children and youth that plant for the planet asked ourselves, what's the bigger picture here? What can tree planting really contribute to solving the problems of our time? So we started asking scientists very simple questions like, how many trees are there in the world? And how many trees can we plant? But what we noticed is that there was very little research on this, and nobody knew. Nobody knew how many trees we had in the world. And maybe some of you might want to guess right now how many trees these could be. So we found a researcher, a scientist at Yale University, who decided to take that question on. And for the next three years, he researched with a team, and he concluded that we have three trillion trees around the world. 
So about 450 trees for each person. That already sounds wonderful, but the problem is we used to have six trillion trees. We already cut down about half of the trees we had in the world. But I guess the good news of what they found out is that currently we have enough free space to plant another trillion trees. So we have enough space without being in conflict with agriculture or our, um, our cities to plant another trillion trees. So 150 trees for each person in the world. And if we manage to plant these trees, they would absorb about a quarter of human-made CO2 emissions every year. So like all of the other solutions I mentioned before, it's not the one solution that's going to solve the climate crisis, but it's one important step towards the climate crisis, towards solving the climate crisis. Because we are reducing our carbon emissions far too slowly. I think that only through this biggest afforestation in human history, we will be able to still keep global warming below the two degree temperature limit. So what are we doing um, to make this huge vision a success? The first step is we're building a global network of children and youth um, as our plan for the planet ambassadors that can spread this vision and tell people all around the world how important this is. And we already have 55,000 ambassadors. The second step is that we are creating a model project um, to show how easy it is to plant trees on a big scale. And we're doing one of these projects in Campeche in Mexico. We've now planted over one million trees for one euro per tree. And we're continuing to plant now one tree every 15 seconds. The third step is we're continuing to fund these researchers that I mentioned earlier to answer questions like, um, what, um, what, they, they want to calculate how, um, what exactly is the impact of planting these trees, but also how many millions of jobs they will create, and the benefits to our global economy and fighting poverty, and to answer all these questions. And the fourth step is that we need to bring this, uh, this uh, message, this vision into the world, and in 350 uh, 64 days, so one year minus one day, we will have a big conference in Monaco at which we will start the Trillion Tree camp Campaign to get this message out into the world. So on the 9th of March, 2018. So now I'd like to show you some of the projects that we are um, doing to get there, to achieve this vision. We started with this very small school project, but now we have children and youth all around the world helping us in planting trees too. And when we started Plant for the Planet back then in fourth grade, we thought we had to save the polar bear. But soon after, we understood that it's not about saving the polar bear, but it's about saving our future. This is from Bangladesh. In some parts of the world, the floods are getting worse, while at the same time, the droughts are getting worse in other parts of the world. This is in China. And this is in Northern Africa. This kid is not looking at its reflection, it's drinking. So we made the sticker, save the human. And our big inspiration was the wonderful late Wangai Matai, who planted these 30 million trees in 30 years in Kenya with many, many other women and in, in the process empowered um, the women um, in Kenya. So shortly after finding out about her project, we started planting trees too with that first tree at my school in 2007. And since then, globally, we planted, uh, managed to plant over 14 billion trees. Of course, that wasn't just us children and youth, but with the help of many gov governments, companies, and organizations all around the world. But that's just the very first step towards our big goal of these trillion trees. And at Plant for the Planet, we set ourselves the second goal of becoming one million climate justice ambassadors. So these children, youth all around the world that spread this message. And so far, we've empowered 55,000 such children and youth in, a near, in nearly 1,000 academies. And 
no matter where in the world you join one of these Plan for the Planet academies, you'll learn exactly the same. Um, at the beginning, you'll hear a presentation from another ambassador of Plan for the Planet about what the climate crisis is, what the global poverty crisis is, and why it's so important to plant trees. Then all our participants practice giving presentations themselves, so they learn how easy it is to do that and to spread the message. And after that, we plant trees, of course, at all our academies. And then we collect ideas in our school groups of what, um, and to answer questions like, how do we get adults to support us? How do we get other children and youth to support us? How do we get the media to report about us? How do we plant trees? And then we make plans what we want to do in our schools after we go back home to tackle the climate crisis. And at the end, we present our plans in front of all the participants, and everyone who wants to contribute receives a certificate as a climate justice ambassador. And over the last few years, we asked ourselves how we would save our future if we were the heads of governments of the world. And we asked children and youth all around the world what we, should, what we would do, and we ended up with a three-point plan. The first point is that from 2050 onwards, we can no longer burn any more fossil fuels. The second point is that even until then, there's only a limited amount of carbon we can still exhaust, about one and a half tons per person per year. And if someone wants to pollute more, then they pay to the ones that pollute less. And that way, we can also fight the poverty crisis. And the third point of our three-point plan is to plant trees, to plant one trillion trees. So, to spread this message, we've gone to many heads of governments of the world and sent letters to all the heads of governments of the world, asking them how they are planning to save our future. And we did the same at many parliaments, and we presented our three-point plan in front of parliaments all around the world, like the European Parliament. But we were most successful with local governments, where we convinced many of them, or some of them, to be honest, some of them, to start planting these 150 trees for each one of their citizens towards this goal of the trillion trees. But in addition to getting governments and companies to act, we also have to convince the people that something has to be done. And we do that, among other things, through our campaign Stop Talking, Start Planting, as you saw earlier in the video. And we took one of these pictures with the King of Spain. And one day after we did that, it was in all newspapers, and not just in the newspapers, but actually on the cover pages. Here it's on the side, but we count that too. <laughs> and at Plan for the Planet, some of our ambassadors also made an e-card. So if you go on our website and click e-card, you can upload a picture. For instance, the president of Mexico. If the picture doesn't fit, just upload another one. And if it still doesn't fit, you use the arrow keys and then you send it to your friends. And many of our ambassadors have been protesting all around the world. For instance, our first protest was during the um, Copenhagen Climate Conference in 2009 in front of the German Chancellery. And one, book, uh, one picture of our demonstrations even came into a German school book. And each January, when in many of the cities in Germany and other parts of the world, um, people leave their Christmas trees on the roads, some of our ambassadors go around and put speech bubbles on them. These are German puns, and translating them won't um, work, so I'm sorry. Hätte ich Arme, würde ich Bäume pflanzen? Wenden Sie sich bitte an meine Zweigstelle. Suche Partner zwecks Fortpflanzung. Or retten Sie wenigstens meinen Stammbaum. Please save my family tree. And we children and youth that plan for the planet also wrote a book called Tree by Tree that's now in 10 different languages. 
And of course, Plant for the Planet also has a democratic structure, which means that all our 55,000 ambassadors from around the world, organized in their local clubs, elect our um, global board every year of children and youth. And if someone wants to support us, but doesn't have a backyard where they can plant trees themselves, what they can do is support us um, and we'll plant the trees for them in real life. So you plant a tree in our virtual forest and then donate one year, one tree, and then we plant it in our big afforestation project in Campeche in Mexico, where 78 employees plant trees all year long. And this is what these trees are like after one year. And in case any one of you is ever near Campeche, Mexico, which is quite near to the beaches at Cancun, if anyone should ever be there, you could just write me an email and then you, you're welcome to visit our plantation project for two or three days. If you want to stay longer, you'll have to plant trees too. <laughs> and when we started making our Plant for the Planet t-shirts, we found out that to produce a t-shirt out of cotton, you need about, um, about 20,000 liters of water, 2,000 liters of water, sorry. You need about 2,000 liters of water. So we really asked if there's a better method to make t-shirts. And then we found out that you can make t-shirts out of wood. And naturally, we call them the tree shirts. Now, all our Plant for the Planet t-shirts are such tree shirts, but we want to spread this idea much further. Now, some of you might be thinking, isn't that counterproductive? They plant trees, and then they make their t-shirts out of these trees. But what's really important to understand is that um, it's very important to use wood too. Because, for instance, if you build a building out of concrete, to create that building, um, if to produce that concrete, you're creating a lot of carbon emissions. About 7% of all our CO2 emissions around the world are caused through construction. If instead we make buildings out of wood, then that wood will continue to store the carbon. So creating buildings out of wood is a big part of the solution. And the same is with t-shirts out of wood. And through these tree shirts, we want to um, express exactly that. But we don't want to just wear them ourselves. We've come up with loads of great slogans to spread them, like looking wood. We've actually spent too much time on slogans. But <laughs> and then there's another project we've been working on. You saw at the beginning in the video that we wanted to start a project with the chocolate industry but no company wanted to support us. So one of our ambassadors said, okay, we'll make our own chocolate and show them. And this turned into the Change Chocolate, or Die Gute Schokolade in German, which is now the most sold fair trade chocolate in Germany. And what's important is, is that it's not just fair trade and carbon neutral, but with every five chocolates we sell, we plant a tree. And that's only possible because um, everyone involved in producing and selling the chocolate um, doesn't earn anything, but all the income goes directly into our tree planting projects. And we're currently also working on an app for the chocolate. If you're out and about in a city near a store that sells the chocolate, you'll hear a beep in your pocket and know where to go shopping. <laughs> and a while ago, we asked the astronauts of the International Space Station if they wanted to try our chocolate as well. And shortly after that, 12 bars of our chocolate were on board of the Albert Einstein to the International Space Station. So two bars per astronaut. And I think that means we can officially call it astronaut food. <laughs> so that's planned for the planet. Our big aim of planting one trillion trees is still quite, a while, uh, quite ahead, but I hope that many of you um, will join us in, in making that happen. And if you want to support us in your country to make this happen, please give me your business card or drop it in the jar at, the, at our booth there, um, and we'll email you how you can help us. And as a thank you, we brought um, our books um, for every, all of you and also one bar of the changed chocolate for everyone. Thank you.